So we're now going to look at extending violin so we can create our own custom validator to keep all of our uh, rule messages, field messages. And more importantly, we're going to create a new rule that allows us to validate whether a username is already taken in our database. Now, normally when you're working with validation of this kind, it gets really, really messy. But this way we can create our own class, keep everything nice and tidy, and we can reuse this rule wherever we want to. So we're going to be creating a unique username rule. Now you could go as far as creating a unique rule that allows you to pass in uh, different arguments and then you can do some really clever stuff within here. But let's look at a basic version of this first and then you can go ahead and uh, update it as you need. So the first thing that we want to do is just create a new file with this class in. So this is going, going to be our validator class. So I'm going to call this uh, my validator. So in here then, let's create a my validator class. Now for this to work with violin, we need to extend violin. And we also need to go ahead and import, sorry, extends violin. We also need to go ahead and import violin, violin up here. And we can include this into our index page. You obviously wouldn't do this normally. It would be part of your project. We can get rid of the import here and we can go ahead and we can require in myValidator.php and obviously this would all be nice and structured in the real world. So now that we've got this, uh, this kind of works in exactly the same way. Um, oops, we've got this issue here. Let's just take a look. That, that's why we need to get rid of this. So there. So now instead of doing this, which just caused an error because violin can't be found now because we haven't imported it on this page, we create a new my validator, which then has all of the functionality that violin offers us. Now what we're going to do this time is we're going to start working on our database. So we have a database called website. This has a table in it called users, which is probably what you'd find in most applications. And we have an ID, which is an auto incrementing field and a username. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this rule to check whether whatever we type in exists in our database. Um, and if obviously we come across a value that does already exist, we can return false and then the rule fails and we can output a custom error to our user. So what we want to do then is within my validator, um, we're going to go ahead and accept a database dependency. So I'm going to create a, a DB property in here. Now in the constructor of this, we are going to take in a PDO instance. I'm going to call that DB. I'm going to say this DB equals DB. So where is this database connection coming from? Well, in this case, all we're going to do is in here, we're going to say DB equals, and we're going to create a new PDO connection. So this is going to be MySQL. The host is going to be localhost. The database name is website. And also I'm using a different port. So this is 33060 whereas normally it'd just be 3306. So you may not need to include this. And then we provide our username. In my case, it's Homestead. And then our password, in this case, it's secret. So let's just check that that database connection didn't fail. Okay, so the error that we're seeing here is because we need to pass in uh, the database as a dependency to our validator. So all we do is we pass that data connect, database connection into our validator and then we have access to that within our validator. So when I refresh, uh, nothing really happens because we're not doing anything. So now what we need to do is work out how we're going to validate this. So let's just uh, go ahead and validate. And in here, we're going to say, well, we want to pass in a username. So this could be uh, the username that the user submitted when they were registering, for example. And in here, I'm just going to type in Conan. So in here, then, we want this to be required. So this is our required rule. Uh, let's go ahead and var dump v errors all. And we should see no errors. So we've got an empty array because this value has been um, included. So now what we need to do is add a custom rule called unique username. So this is going to check that this value doesn't exist within this table. So 
Over in my validator, we're going to create a custom rule in a slightly different way by adding a method. So any custom rule that we create needs to be uh, needs to have validate underscore prepended to it. And then we give the name of the rule. So unique username like so. So now within this method, we can return true or false to determine if this rule has failed or not. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return true, just uh, hard code that in so we can make sure this works. And then we'll go ahead and update it to use our database connection. So remember, as with adding custom rules using the add rule method, we have value, input and args if we need to use them. In this case, we're only going to be using the value. So when I refresh, then nothing happens because we return true here. But if I return false, this is going to give us an error. But we don't have an error for this unique username rule. So let's go ahead and add it within our constructor. So I'm going to say add rule message unique username. That username is already taken. So now, because I've returned false there, we will see that username is already taken. Simple. So now we need to come up with the uh, solution to actually check this. You may already know how to do this, so you can obviously feel free to skip this part if you want. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this now. So we're going to create a variable called user, and we're going to use this DB. Remember, we stored our database connection that we passed through to our validator up here. So we're going to say prepare, we're going to use a prepared statement here. And we'll just do a quick query just to select count star as count. And that's going to be from the users table. And this is where the username equals and then we have a username placeholder, which we can go ahead and execute on. So all we need to do is say user execute pass in username. And this value obviously comes from the value that we passed through, which is here. So now all we need to do is an if statement to say if user will fetch this result back as an object, we'll grab the count, which is remember this count that we provided here. So if uh, the username does exist, we want to return false. So this is all we're doing. We're just checking if it if it exists or not. And then otherwise, we want to return true at the bottom just here. So now this is actually uh, using our live database connection. We have our rule message in place. We obviously have our rule in place. So we can go ahead and check this. So when I refresh, we see no errors because we know that the value Conan doesn't already exist in this database table. But if we update it to something like Billy or Alex, we'll get the message back. That username is already taken. So just by uh, creating a custom class, extending, extending violin, we can go ahead and we can create our own um, rules within this using uh, validate underscore and then the name of the rule. And obviously you can pass in any dependencies you need to this class. So for example, if you were keeping all of your errors uh, within some kind of config or some kind of language uh, language helper, you could go ahead and pass that in here and then you could replace all of these just to keep things nice and tidy.